just like the rest of us. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you feeling? Yay! And again, how are you feeling? Yay! A little bit louder, please. Come on, I know it's not that late in the afternoon. Yay! Oh, lovely. Now, obviously, our next guests are here to do the speeches. And so, can I please introduce to the stage first, Sarah Sutton. You can sit there, absolutely. I've been told to sit here, so I will sit in the middle. Okay. The doctor told me to sit in the middle. The doctor told you. Right, I have to do what the doctor said. Can I now introduce David Goodison? Oh, we should this over here. That's the kind of cue I need. And finally, I introduce Holly. It's, now. Like a, it's like a cockfight, isn't it? Yeah, we're in the arena and they're all looking down on us. Are you looking down on us? Yeah. Yes. Well, obviously. Hello. I know it's like, it's like, have you watched Gladiator? <laughs> that awful late night programme where those very rich Romans watch people beating oh, seven yes, daylights yes, out yes, of yes, each yes. other. You're all the rich Romans up there. You own us. You can sell us and make us fight. <laughs> I love it. He's given a thumb down over here. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay, quick check. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like, does anybody have a question, please raise your arms high. And this mic will get passed around as you know. So, gentlemen over here, thank you. Just wondering, can I ask Colin, after the brilliant post by the sea, how quick that said it bring you back to the dark shadows universe? Oh, I love doing that Dark Shadows. It was amazing. Yeah, I, you know, I, I read that, I thought, why have they got me for it? And I, I had never heard or seen Dark Shadows, so they played me extracts of the voices of the actors. So I, I did approximations of what I thought their voices would be like. But I really enjoyed doing it, and I, I listened to it uh, a couple of weeks ago in the car, driving home late one night, and it's really spooky. It works really well. So, uh, get it. Is dark, this a big finish? It's a big Wait. finish. Oh, right. And they're doing Dark Shadows, which is the 50s American TV series. Oh, right. And they're doing it on audio. And this was a story about a character who actually wasn't in the original series, but meeting lots of people who were. And he's writing the story in his, as a diary. So it's all me. Oh, right, okay. And I'm English, but I'm doing all these American voices oh, as well. fantastic. But it was such a spooky story. I thought it was rather good. Well, go out and buy that one. Yeah. yeah. Sounds excellent. House by the Sea. <laughs> I'm booked. <laughs> so if they, if they ask me to do any more, I will, yes. Um, David, you were Davros, if I remember correctly, right? I was indeed. Oh. Yeah, was it the Destiny of the Dogs one? It was indeed. Yep. Yeah. I was just wondering, why was Davros suddenly Scottish? I bet. <laughs> Scottish? Yeah, because all the dark horses I've seen, they're all English, and then you did this in the darks, and then he said the cages. What? No, they're not Scottish. Your question isn't very clear. I, I've seen him doing dark horses, and it didn't sound Scottish to me. Is this to me. Exterminate! No, 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 no. <laughs> I go, exterminate? No, 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 no. Is <laughs> his name David? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so but from now on, you will be known as the Scottish Shout. I will be the Scottish And there's nothing wrong. Very happy with that. That's a <laughs> Especially if it was intentional. <laughs> exactly. Um, da David. 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 Uh, David. How awkward was it in the um, Dad Ross chair? Very awkward, yeah, yes, it is. I mean, it was about an hour and a half, about two hours of makeup, and then you're in this thing and you're in it for this head, you're in it for the day, um, you can't eat, 
you, uh, you, you just eat through a, sit through a straw, but it was fairly uncomfortable. So it was a case of suffering for art, I think. You get pushed around, you get yeah, pushed around as well. Yeah, push around around around. yeah you're, the, you're the genius who created the Dalek, the master, bigger baddie at all time, and yet you're shoved around like an old people, like a person in an old people's home. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 And when you're also offered a jelly baby by Tom Baker, yeah, indeed. <laughs> that was able to fit in his mouth. Hello? Hello? Sorry, Andy. Hello? Cheers. Hello? Yeah. Uh, question for Sarah. Um, it, I, I, sorry, this is a bit tough one. Um, because you played this on TV and audio, um, how do you interpret the role of a Doctor Who companion from your perspective? And what, in your opinion, are the ingredients to make a companion work? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, sorry, it is a tough one. <laughs> yeah, uh, to can I phone a friend? <laughs> no? 50-50? Um, pass? <laughs> well, the, list, the, the part that I play with the audios is the part, is the extension of the Lissa on the TV, and the list that I was given was given to me in my first story, Keeper of Charlton. Your first story sets sets up the character, but for most assistants, the character tends to um, fluctuate slightly in, in, in subsequent stories, and you either get good, strong plots or you get weak plots. In my case, there were three other assistants in the TARDIS, which I think is slightly too many, and it, it meant that all the stories were divvied up, yeah, between too many assistants, really. So I think my character slightly suffered because of that, which is why Big Finish has been so fantastic, because it's meant that Nissa's been given um, a whole new world. And in fact, when I do Big Finish, I get to play two different Nissas, because I get to play my old Nissa, but also a new Nissa who has a husband and kids, and so I get, um, I get a double helping, so that's really good. Colin, Colin, would you ever like to play the Doctor Who again with Matt Smith? No. <laughs> He's too good. He'd make me look bad. No, of course. Never say never. There's no point in saying anything really. Because uh, I'm an act job. Uh, I either want or I don't expect. If I was asked to do it with Matt Smith, I'd probably say yes. Um, unless I was lying on the floor by him for half an hour, I might say no then. But so it's, it's kind of hypothetical. But I think Matt Smith is an excellent dog. So uh, that situation, I say no, but it ain't gonna happen. Oh. 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 Um, you made the doctor, and because the doctors over the years have been really good actors, if you were going to pick someone to succeed to Matt Smith, who would you pick out of any, um, any actor? And what's interesting, Chris, what particular thing would you pick, or such as your body colour coat or Tom Baker scarf? What would you get? Well, you're not going to like the answer to this question. First of all, I think 12 regenerations, one of them has got to be female. So, you know, there's a wealth of female talent out there. Dawn French. What about Dawn French for the Doctor? Yeah, hey. He should be very good. Um, what? The curve did Clothes? Oh. I wish Doctor Who would stop having a costume. Why can't he wear clothes? Why can't he be wearing one thing one day, another thing another day, like the rest of us? What is it, apart from BBC budget? that stops the doctor changing his clothes every now and then, all the time. Why doesn't he wear what makes him unnoticeable in the environment in which he is? If he goes to a planet where everybody wears purple, why would he walk around dressed as I was? No, he put on something purple so he could go about his business. That is a, a logic in Doctor Who I've never understood. The idea of the Doctor has to wear a costume. Nobody here wears costume. Well, yes, they do. <laughs> but nobody here wears... Oh, dear. <laughs> but you know what I mean. People wear clothes. I think the Doctor should, too. I don't think it should be a big deal what he turns up in. Um, Colin, can I ask... Just here, in the front. 
Oh, hey. Hi there. Um, I thought you've probably been asked this a hundred times before, but what did you make of the way that your doctor was killed off and regenerated? The way the actual what happened to him? What did you make of it? I've never seen it. Really? No. I, do you know, I've yet to see an episode of Sylvester's. Because at the time, I was grumpy and hacked off, so I didn't watch it. I don't want to see it. And now, I mean, in the passage of time, I ought to, but I haven't. So I've seen it at conventions, I've seen the clip of my regeneration, I think it looks stupid. Um, so anyone who's on Twitter will note that I was asked a question yesterday or the day before, uh, when it suddenly occurred to me, you know, they said, would you like to film your regeneration scene? And I said, actually, no, because that means I haven't regenerated. Therefore, all the other doctors afterwards are imposters. No regeneration. It was a pretend regeneration. That wasn't me. So, I am the doctor. Six is a number, and I am six. Hi, hi Colin. Uh, your favourite, their own stories. You, you know, it's a bit like asking what's your favourite child, uh, or what's your favourite dog. Um, they're all my stories. Uh, I, I sometimes answer it just because people seem to want an answer. So I, I might say two doctors one day because of working with Pat Troughton, but then I might say Twin Dilemma another day because it was the best episode ever made. Yay. As voted by the readers of Doctor Who magazine. Oh no, sorry. It was the worst episode ever made. <laughs> I, I have the honour of appearing in the best episode ever made, according to the Doctor Who poll, which was Caves of Androzani, and the one immediately afterwards, which was me, <laughs> was the worst ever. So that's quite an achievement, isn't it? No, I thought Time Flight was the worst. Oh it? no, not, not once Twin Dilemma was made. Uh, okay. Were you in time, though? I was in time. Oh, bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two questions. Um, this is for all babies. What, who's your favourite doctor? Matt Smith. That surprised you, didn't it? <laughs> I think he's brilliant. I love him. I believe every word. I, do you know, when I heard another young doctor was going to take over, I was kind of depressed because I thought, you know, why can't we have a 60-year-old doctor again? Occasionally. But it's because of the demographic of the audience, I understand that. And to keep us watching. You know, because girls started watching Doctor Who because of David Tennant. Um, and, correct? Yes. 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 Yeah. And, and if suddenly, you know, someone like another John Pertwee turned up, those same girls would say, oh, he's not eye candy. So they're always going to keep young people now. But I was wrong about Matt because he is young in terms of human earth years. He's, like an old, he's an old man, so he's old as well, isn't he? He's I mean, old he's inside. Brilliant. I yeah. believe, and I believe every word he says, I believe it's happening to him at that moment. And that's the, 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 the knack of a truly good actor. I, I'm just intrigued by him. I think he, and I know all those. Oh, David Tennant's gone. Who don't view in the same way, but think about it. I, I, I believe everything he does, and I, I gather he's kind of very creative on the studio floor. He comes up with new stuff all the time. I like that. I find that exciting. Someone's phone. <laughs> <laughs>